final test. <laughs> Grandpa's experiment is coming along rather nicely tonight, Lily. When Grandpa's happy, it seems to give the whole house a lift. <laughs> to the blue chips. Cousin Wolfbane's twins, Igor and Lucretia. Are arriving Thursday, 10 a.m., International Airport. Well, <laughs> it looks like Cousin Wolfbane's children are going to be visiting us for a spell. I just love spells. I just hate relatives, especially from Transylvania. Now, who could be at the door at this hour? Almost anyone might be out strolling on a beautiful night like this. Excuse me for interrupting your uh, masquerade party, but I'm afraid I'm lost. I'm looking for the Anderson Oil Refineries. The Anderson Oil Refineries? Of course. I knew a rich widow who lived near there once. Passed away about uh, ten years ago. I must look her up sometime. Yeah, maybe we should ask somewhere else, boss. What for? I'll tell you the same thing I will. You follow this road, straight as the bat flies, take the first werewolf leg to the left, and from there it's only a dagger's throw to the refinery. Oh, thank you. You're most welcome. Beware of mysterious rain-soaked strangers, particularly the one who just asked you for directions. Enjoying the ride, Mr. Anderson? Mm -hmm. Eddie, that's very rude. You should be looking forward to meeting your two cousins, Igor and Lucretia. So I can play ring around the graveyard with a couple of Transylvanian transplants? Eddie, listen to me. They'll be fun. Oh, sure. The three of us sitting up on a mountainside, howling at the moon. Well, that's as it should be if you're normal kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, Eddie, you're ruining your life with football, surfing, studying, playing the drums. Honestly, Eddie, sometimes I wonder, where did we go wrong? Now, you let me in there. Eddie, where'd you go? Flight 13 from Transylvania will be arriving in seven minutes at gate six. Oh, thank you. I think this calls for a royal welcome. Let's see. I did the werewolf for Cousin Magda and the fire-breathing dragon for Uncle Ludwig, but for the twins... <laughs> Welcome, Mini Monsters. Is that a new kind of motorcycle, Captain Cliff? Now, there's something you don't see every day, Captain Cliff. Yeah, what? A sky-riding bat with a gray face. A sky-riding bat with a gray face? That's crazy. Not as crazy as a helicopter pilot with a green face. Look out below! No. No. That looks like Igor and Lucretia. The alligator bags or the kids? It is Igor and Lucretia. Hey, it's the clan, man. Right. They're out of sight. They slipped me five, man. Fantastic. Hiya, cuz. What's happening? Uh, Lil, they're not Transylvanian monsters. But they are a lot like American monsters. My, my, that music.
music sounding better. I think it's Grandpa's invention. Well, he's certainly inventing some interesting explosions. Hey, everybody. How'd you dig that sound, Uncle Herman? Don't these kids really wail, Pop? This is only after one session. Can you imagine what'll happen after we practice for three weeks? Oh, no. I can. But I don't know where Lily, Grandpa, and I will find another place to live. It's not that we don't enjoy the music, dear. It's just that we'd enjoy it a lot more if you could practice somewhere else. Well, there's a music room down at the school, but we don't have any wheels. Eddie, I promised you a car for your birthday, and I am a man of my word. My own car? <laughs> and now, for the final test. Grandpa, come on up. We're going to take Eddie down to get his car. <laughs> Head south, Grandpa. We'll meet you at the used car lot. Since I've taken over Anderson Refineries, we've developed a new process. Every fleet owner, automobile leasing company, and car dealer in town has agreed to use our new gasoline. Oh, we'd be happy to try it, Mr. Murdoch. Try it? Oh, use it. Hey, just put me down on the list. I already have. <coughs> oh, uh, do you have any idea of what that guck does to people? Now look around, kids. I'll see if I can find a salesman. Is it still there, Hennessy? Hello? Salesman? Anybody here? Maybe if we're quiet, it'll go away. There are others, too. Grandpa, the kids have rediscovered their heritage. Isn't this the funkiest, Uncle Herman? Yeah, this is the campiest. Uh, uh, campiest? You think there's enough room back here for the instruments? Oh, Eddie, take my word for it. There's plenty of room. Oh, oh does this bring back memories? <laughs> now you're sure you kids don't want to look around some more? No, please, don't look anymore. I'll make you a deal. If you want it, it's yours. Cheap. Oh, oh boy. wow! Out of sight! <laughs> I uh, hope you'll also let me pay for the other uh, damage. Pay, pay. Only don't let him look anymore. <laughs> Got your license, Eddie? Got it. Bye, Dad, and thanks. Bye. Be careful, Eddie. The you drive pretty good for a beginner. Yeah, we've gone two miles. I haven't even driven up a single tree yet. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. I think your voice is changing. I didn't say that. I didn't either. I did. And I'd better take over, or you'll spoil your record. Where'd you come from? I came from where you were almost going. I don't know whether to talk to you or not. Suit yourself, my dear. None of my other clients did. Just who are you? I am the ghost of Jeremiah Grundy, an undertaker. You are Eddie, Igor, and Lucretia. I'm also an eavesdropper. I hope you're also a good mechanic. Out of gas, my boy. So soon? We started with a full tank. That was only a couple of miles back. My, you're getting a lot better mileage out of her than I did. Hang in there, man. Why don't we have a little rock session right here in the car? May I request my favorite dirt? As I recall, that is not it. You know, we really are moving. I've been moved by Beethoven, Brahms, and Bach. But a whole car be moved by that. Grandpa! Grandpa! What is it, Herman? I'm busy. The kids never arrived at school, Grandpa. You, you, you think something happened? Oh, relax. <laughs> what happened? is my new invention is working. I rig Eddie's car so he won't drive too fast. Oh, Grandpa, you're an angel. Watch your language, really. Hey, Uncle Herman, Grandpa. It's a miracle, Pop. We've got a car that runs on music. Now, 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 just calm down, Eddie. Nobody around here believes in miracles. It's true, Uncle Herman. We were out of gas, but when we started playing music, the car started going. Ask Mr. Grundy. He's the ghost who was driving. Now that I can believe. Does your invention have anything to do with music? The receiver was activated by my super electroscopular transmitter in the basement. 
somehow it must have picked up musical vibrations. Where could I have gone wrong, Herman? Oh, look at it this way, Grandpa. Those were Dr. Frankenstein's words when he first saw me. And look how well I've turned out. Are you trying to tell us music makes that heap go? It does, on it. <laughs> what do you do? Pull into a station and say, fill her up with a funeral march? <laughs> Seeing's believing, man. Come on, we'll take you for a ride. Forget it. I'm not riding in any goodbye wagon. Besides, here comes my dad. Hey, Dad. Your new gas has some competition. These clowns say this heap runs on music. Music? Better not whistle, son. It's liable to drive away without them. <laughs> Come on, hop in. What's well, true, Mr. Murdoch? It's part of my grandpa's invention. And it'll wipe out anything on the road. You want a race? You got it. Now, wait a minute, Igor. A race isn't going to prove anything. Just that you're too chicken. Well, this chicken is going to make mincemeat out of that turkey of yours. Oh, yeah? You know the Grand Prix course in the park? Meet you there. You bet. Ready, Stuffy? Anytime you are, music lovers. <laughs> oh, I can't see a thing. But I certainly know what Santa Claus feels like coming down a chimney. Smokestack is taking the lead again, folks. I wonder what he's burning in that car. Hollow tires? I can't see who's causing all this smoke. I think we are, Dad. None of your lip. The secret to winning is patience and perseverance. So much for patience and perseverance. Darn it, Pop. We don't have a chance. The faster we play, the faster we go. Faster, man, faster. Oh, we're gaining on them. The finish line. We can do it, kids. Faster, faster. Are you going to let them get away with it? Beating us with a musical jalopy? Only as long as they keep their musical powers to themselves. It's a sight for sore eyes, folks, and I do mean sore eyes, nose, and throats. The sky has never been bluer, the air never cleaner. The visibility is 100% and going up. Ever since the monster music maker hit the market, more and more cars have been converted to it. It's been goodbye smog, hello music power. We promised we'd bring them to you folks, and here they are our Fair City's new first family. They've put music into your gas tanks and happiness into your hearts. <laughs> first, let's have a word from the modest gentleman whose invention we're honoring. When did you first realize that your invention was destined to change the face of a nation? After the race. And it's my conservative prediction that every car in the entire world will eventually be running on music power. I don't have to tell you, gentlemen, that as this fluky invention takes over, your stock in my new gasoline won't be worth the smoke it's going up in. What are we gonna do, boss? Well, since the chairman of the board, Mr. Anderson, is <laughs> tied up at the moment, the decision is up to me. And I say we steal that invention and destroy it before it destroys us. Uh, the way I figure, they're sending that music out over some kind of electronic contraption. You guys find it and bring it here. Yeah, but suppose we can't find it, boss. Then someone's gonna find you two gentlemen in a barrel going over Niagara Falls. <laughs> Is this something else? In Transylvania, our music used to drive people bananas. Now it's driving them all over town. And probably Mr. Murdoch, right up the wall. Bronco, what's that? Uh, what do you mean, what's that? It's a checkerboard with a large, scaly dinosaur's tail wrapped around it. <laughs> yeah, a large, scaly dinosaur's tail wrapped around it? Hey, I've got some Transylvanian threads that used to belong to Grandpa. Let's go get them. Shh, shh. You'll wake up the tail. And I don't want to know what's at the other end of it. This must be it. Now that we found it, let's get out of here. No, relax. We made it past that tail, didn't we? What else could there be? You see 
those guys? Boy, they sure look scared. I wonder what of. Yeah. You'd think they'd never seen kids dancing before. <laughs> Honest, Mr. Murdoch, we never touched a drop. And I never touched the ground, either, after I saw those street dancing monsters. Oh, beautiful. Now they'll have that invention on the lock and key of all the breaks. The only break we got was having that giant thing with the dinosaur's tail sound asleep. If you ask me, you guys were asleep and have a nightmare. Now, if they do have a giant pet, so much the better. For who? For us. It's simple, gentlemen. When you're after something big, you grab something bigger and hold it for ransom. Don't you think it's a little strange that they invited us to be honored guests at a luncheon at the last minute, Pop? Hey, we're celebrities, man. It's a tough life being in constant demand. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Television interviews, autographs. Oh, it looks like somebody's moving into the neighborhood. Maybe we ought to stop and help them. Mm, hurry, man. We'll be late for the chicken a la king. You're right, Grandpa. Celebrities would never stop to move a piano anyway. <laughs> I hope we're not late for the party. If you mean the masquerade, sir, that was last night. And you're approximately six months early for the Mardi Gras. We're the monsters. They're honoring us at a luncheon in the Wedgwood Room. But the Wedgwood Room is closed for alterations. Madame. And your head ought to be closed for alterations, Herman. <laughs> Who told you about this? Uh, a, a, a very nice gentleman on the phone, Grandpa. Who I'd never heard of before. Who would invite us to a party when there isn't any party at all? Somebody who wanted to get us out of the house. Maybe those two men you told us about with their hair standing on end? Well, we'd better get back to the house. All clear downstairs. All clear upstairs. Spot. He's gone, Pop. Hey, look at this. Spot's footprint. Either that or a meteor landed. Oh, look at these tire tracks. Yeah. Somebody wasn't moving in with a van. They were moving out with Spot. Come on. Spot's food dish. That's the dish your pet eats out of. Mr. Grundy. Mr. Grundy. I'm here, dear. Just practicing disappearing in case we find this little creature. Well, this identification tag ought to bring him running. Looks like this tag is the last clue. Just one more. Spot's tail. Oh, wow! Spot! Man, are we lucky? That's the question. The answer is no. Yes? Uh, who is it? Never mind that. The important thing is if you want to know where your kids are, bring that mixed up music machine of yours to 14 Front Street and come along. This place is locked up tighter than a drum. There's no way out. Sure there is. Anyone know any funny stories? I could sure use a good laugh. I know a cute poem. It's about algae. Algae saw the bear. The bear saw algae. The bear was bulgy. The bulge was algae. <laughs> I think that got him laughing. Murdoch, I always figured you for a real live monster. Where are those kids? Safer than you're gonna be if you don't hand over that music box. I didn't take over Anderson Refineries to be cheated by an old loony with a new tune. Maybe you should listen to it, Murdoch. It's better than that new process of yours. <laughs> that stuff's nothing but cheap, diluted turpentine. Well, that's for us to know, and the suckers out there to find out. About ten million dollars later. Well, folks, they've spotted three kids on a tugboat out in the river. Goody, goody, they got away! 
Come on, Lil. Maybe we can stop Grandpa from giving away his invention. Goodbye, music. Oh, it won't start, Lil. There's something wrong. Uh, no music. As luck would have it, folks, we're running on old-fashioned gas. But that tug we've been watching in the river isn't quite so lucky. Those kids are drifting without any power, and anything could happen. Grandpa, the music power stopped. We need your invention to start it again. Good luck. It's in a million pieces in an alleyway. It's we're getting pretty hairy for the tugboat, folks. They're still drifting out of control. Oh, they're headed for the waterfall. I've got most of it put together, but there's still one part missing. I don't even know what it is. Where is it missing? There? Herman! <laughs> You are the missing part. But <laughs> it's on. Man, is that music to my ears. But I'll tell you what isn't. That waterfall. Our only chance is if we can get this tug headed around in the right direction. Well, that's simple. Hey, Spot, did you hear the joke about the two old men? <laughs> the children are fine. Well, I'd give anything to get that conniving crook. So would I, Grandpa. Anything. Would you, Herman? Anything? Even this? Grandpa! I put a couple of receivers in their pockets, and Murdoch and his bodyguard aren't going anywhere. <laughs> Except where I tell them. <laughs> Sorry, Junior, but it'll take more than three kids to bring me in. Will I do? <laughs> it seems to get them every time. 